Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So yes. Welcome, welcome. Ugh, dear sisters. And this is so I was thinking today how amazing this is that five days ago I didn't know most of you. And now I feel connected to all of you. And so right that alone to me is just magnificent. So I'm gonna shut it off and say goodbye. <laughs> just so that no, we're all I'm just so thrilled. So um I'm going to talk about, I'm, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us a little bit into the left brain. We have spent a lot of time in our right brain and the feminine side this, um, this week. I'm going to take us briefly into the left side, to the masculine side, um, and share some research that I on. My passion is the empowerment of all women around the globe. And I'd like to just, I think it's something that is very important for all women to be aware of. And sadly, I don't think enough women are. And that's really my mission, is to um, educate more women on the status of women around the world and what we can do to make a difference and lift women and children out of oppression. So we are at that time. So what I'm going to do, I'll first, that's what I'm going to do is share just some brief information. I'm, I've, I've created a PowerPoint, as I said, that's a very masculine thing to do, but I made it very pretty. And um, I'm going to share this information, and then I'm really just opening it up for discussion with the question of where do we go from here. So bear with me that this all works as it's intended to, and we'll get started. That is really pretty, by the way. All right, there we go. Now we're going to cut off a little bit on the side of the screen because we're going to see our lovely faces. But here we go. Um, calling it the seven pillars of women's empowerment and the divine feminine and rising. The point being, these need to merge. So the left and the right need to merge. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to present for you here. So right now, women are half the world's population. And yet, in 2020, they are not considered equals in most parts of the world. And despite our attempts in the social impact space to direct funding to organizations that serve women and girls, support is surprisingly deficient when compared with philanthropic giving overall. In 2019, the Women's Philanthropy Institute, which is out of Indiana University in the US, published the first Women and Girls Index, and it measured giving to more than 40, 45,000 organizations in the U.S. dedicated to women and girls. The findings show that only 1.6% of all philanthropic support in the U.S. goes to women and girls, right? We additionally found that through studies of foundation giving in both the U.S. and Europe, Researchers estimate that only about 7% of all foundation grants specifically benefit women and girls. So if that doesn't blow you away, I don't know what will. It blew me away. So with the growing acceptance that making investments in women and girls promotes a ripple effect of change throughout families, their communities, and even entire countries, why isn't more funding going to the empowerment of girls and women. And what can we do about that? Perhaps the answer lies in the confusion over how to support women and girls around the globe. Of the philanthropic giving that's directed toward women, 90 cents of each dollar are focused on reproductive health, leaving inadequate funding for the range of other issues that affect women and girls. The factors that will lead to women rising into co-equal partnership with men are varied and they go beyond reproductive health, as important as that is. Intersectionality is a term that we use in women's empowerment. And it came about in the late 80s as a way to understand the complexities around women's lives and to develop solutions that would take these complexities into account. It was coined by a woman by the name of Kimberly Crenshaw, and the essence of inter intersectionality is that gender alone does not determine women's lived experiences. 
according to Crenshaw, intersectionality is to, a way to see multiple forms of exclusion, as well as to advocate for women of all backgrounds and identities. So what does that mean for those of us who desire to lift women up and out of oppression? It means that we need to focus on multiple issues at the same time. We can't just devote resources in one area and expect that that will be enough. But it can be a daunting task to try to sift through all of the data and information to identify those efforts that have the greatest potential for impact. There are so many existing frameworks that are used by different organizations, but not one single framework that is commonly used across the fields. To give you an example of that, we know we're all very familiar with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. But here's the thing, they're not specific to women, they do not organize the topics that improve women's lives holistically in one place. And they can be overwhelming because there are 19 of them. So what can feel overwhelming, I propose, does not have to be. And in an effort to simplify the approach that we better focus our efforts um, in the places where we're likely to have the greatest impacts, I have created what I'm calling the seven pillars of empowerment and the divine feminine rising. So what I've done is I'm using research from the Center for High Impact Philanthropy, which is at the University of Pennsylvania. They have found the five areas um, where the most promising solutions exist um, to have the greatest impact on the lives of women and girls globally. And what they say is that these five areas are inextricably linked and provide a holistic view on how to create the greatest impact. So I'm gonna start with those as kind of the center of our seven pillars. So you'll see me jump to pillar number two, and we'll circle back to pillar number one. So the first area um, that we need to be focused on is health and well-being, So that women are free from disease and pain and able to live full and flourishing lives. Now they've determined under each pillar the um, areas of focus that are most critical. And so they start with nutrition, Wash is a term that we use for water, sanitation, and hygiene. Addressing any issues of mental illness, addiction, and using trauma-informed care. Of course, reproductive health. And interestingly, the presence of a skilled attendant at birth, because death in uh, childbirth is still, sadly, um, happens too, far too often around the globe. Other issues that would come under this pillar would include menstrual hygiene, because that oftentimes keeps girls from going to school, any form of disease. And then in the more developed countries, healthcare reform, and um, looking at the options for alter alternative and holistic healthcare. So that's pillar number two, health and well-being. Pillar number three, education that women have access to knowledge and educational opportunities in order to cultivate learning and expand their possibilities in life. The key factors under education include compulsory and tuition-free education, school environment, what are the, what's the infrastructure and resources available, what's the geographic distance from a child's home, is water and sanitation available. Any issues of health that would keep children from attending school, infectious diseases, rates of teen pregnancy. Cultural norms, what is the attitude toward child marriage? Are little girls married off early? And overall gender roles, are they allowed to go to school? And then safety, what's the safety issues in the country, in their home and in the school? Other issues that would come under the education pillar, school uniforms, uh, education reform overall, particularly in looking at that in the United States, online education options, arts and the humanities in the school, and even access to sports for girls in the school. Pillar number four, economic empowerment so that women are enabled to achieve economic success and have agency over financial decision making. In other words, do they have a say in the finances of their home? Things that we see that impact this, female labor force participation and skills training. They have the option to get a job. They have access to capital, particularly if they're interested in being in entrepreneurship. 
Um, internet and mobile phones are very critical. Mobile phones are typically a way of um, providing banking in, believe it or not, in less developed countries. Whether or not they were able to go to school, whether or not they were um, have any decision over marriage, when and whom to marry, when and how many children to have, whether or not to leave a marriage. Property rights, such as the ability to own land, uh, to own livestock, or to own, own small farm equipment. And then equitable work-related policies and practices. So equal pay for equal work, paid time off, paid maternity leave, freedom from discriminatory labor policies. And other things that would come under, um, under this economic empowerment um, pillar, particularly in developed countries, would be conscious business. So, you know, changing capitalism to conscious business. Profit plus purpose, as I call it. Okay, and then finally, pillar five, freedom, not finally, but pillar five, freedom from violence, a critical, critical piece. Um, so that women are free from violence and other harmful practices that undermine bodily autonomy and well-being. This is such a critical pillar. Things that impact the likelihood of wo a woman or a girl being a victim of violence, whether or not she goes to school, whether or not she is married off as a child, whether or not she lives in poverty, the attitudes toward women in society, particularly violence against women, whatever, what economic opportunities for women exist. Um, other things I too quickly, but other things that would come under that critical, critical pillar of uh, freedom from violence would include all of the, the areas where violence occurs, domestic violence, human trafficking, prostitution, pornography, female genital mutilation, acid attacks, honor killings, mass rape, if that doesn't make you sad, uh, right there. And then, of course, the bigger issues of war and terrorism, gun control, and in the, again, in the United States, prison reform, and even veterans affairs would all come under the pillar of freedom from violence. And then the last pillar that the Center for High Impact Philanthropy focuses on is equality overall. And under that pillar, they focus particularly on, once again, education and economic opportunities for women, but also on the presence of a female political quota. So are women involved in politics? And I would add to that, are women um, involved in senior leadership in corporations or on boards at, at corporations? Other areas here would include anything like legal, human, and property rights. Diversity and inclusion issues would come under this pillar, um, immigration reform. So um, what you'll see is of these, these the, the five pillars that are in between my anchor pillars, um, are, there's a lot of overlap. As you can see, you cannot focus on education unless you're also focused on the health of a, a child. You cannot focus on economic empowerment unless you're focused on education and health. You cannot focus on economic empowerment if, it, if someone is a victim of violence. So all of these are interconnected. And so we really need to be looking holistically at how we lift women up and out of oppression. So what we do know is there is great work being done on the ground to address these issues that keep women and children disempowered. The question that I ask is, is it enough? Are we moving on, women on, from a life of suppression and oppression quickly enough and at scale? And what might we be missing? So my question is, can we really make an impact on the empowerment of women and children if we're living under the old constructs and beliefs of a patriarchal, hierarchical society? Constructs and beliefs around culture, religion, politics, business, education, healthcare, that we have in many ways accepted for ourselves as truth until now. The rise of the divine feminine on the planet is shifting the way we look at women and men, the roles we play, the privileges we have, where the power is held, and ultimately the imbalance that is prevalent in all sectors. And it's time to incorporate two long forgotten pillars into the women's empowerment movement and all sectors of society. These are anchor pillars that we've spent a lot of time talking about this past week in our the sacred room we've been in. It is time to remember the feminism of the past, the patriarchy of the past, and how they now lead us 
the rise of the divine feminine. So the way we do that is with the two anchor pillars. Pillar number one is reconnecting to Mother Earth. Women and children are significantly impacted by the desecration of our planet. So healing the planet is a critical step in lifting them out of oppression. And the factors, key factors that would come under this pillar are things that you've seen before. Wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene, our food supply. Animal welfare, a critical piece that we haven't talked about, but where most of the um, harm is done to our an animal population is in the manufacturing of our food. And that needs to be addressed, at least here in the United States. Of course, environmental sustainability, climate change and natural disasters, and then affordable and clean energy would also come under this pillar. And finally, pillar number seven, what I call restoring the sacred feminine. Remembering, as we've talked about this week, all life is sacred. We need to remember this for ourselves. We need to remember that we are sacred, and then we need to share this with all humanity. This is where we know that everything is sacred. There's a deep sense of inherent worth and dignity in each of us. This is where rising consciousness and a new spirituality emerges. We remember our authentic self, where we find self-empowerment and self-responsibility. And we have the ability to attain the freedom that our soul remembers. All of which leads to unity, light, love, and compassion. It is my belief that if the sacred is restored, all of the other pillars will take care of themselves. Here's how I see it. Those are our anchor pillars, restoring the sacred feminine at the top, reconnecting to Mother Earth at the bottom, and the five other pillars within. We return to the sacred. It leads to empowerment which ultimately leads to peace on earth. We learned this week that there won't be peace until the voices of the grandmothers are heard. And we desperately need the voice of women to lead us out of the darkness and into the light, to remember our truth, to remember we are all connected, and to remember that we are divine. And this beautiful quote from Megan Watterson, she realized that all along within her, she contained the power to save herself. And so she did. And that is where I will leave you. Okay. That's my spiel. And so I am as I said, open it up, open up the, the mics. Um, this is what I believe. I just, I believe this is where we are. And I believe we have the ability now to come together and, and move forward. And I would just love to hear your thoughts based on this. And again, how do we infuse the divine feminine into all sectors of society? How do we use women's voices to make that happen? So please share. Thank you, Liz. That was wonderful. Um, there's so much to say about all of this, but first I'd like to ask you what you saw and felt that moved you to do all this research and put this together. So when I started focusing on women's empowerment, it was approximately five years ago, I, I believe. Um, I was very interested in social impact, but um, you know, in, in terms of trying to find your purpose, your mission, where you're meant to serve. What was happening was this was a time when my children were, uh, my boys, I have two boys. Uh, one was probably a freshman in high school and one would have been in about sixth or seventh grade. And what I started to see happening was um, in women's lives that were close to me. So they were family members, friends, particularly friends' daughters or family members' daughters, so young women. I saw them making decisions in their lives that I would say was not life affirming. I was concerned. I was concerned because these were, these were 
young women who were educated, they've been brought up in good homes, blah, blah, blah. And this was happening. And I thought, if this is happening here, I can only imagine what's happening to young girls who don't have guidance at all. And so I felt like, um, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to share this and I won't use the, the crude term, but I am going to share this. So the final straw was uh, my oldest son was a freshman in high school. And this was when the phones were just coming out. And so we decided, OK, you can have the phone and you can start texting, but we have the right to read your text at any time You know, while we're getting used to this. And he agreed to that. And so I used to take his phone every so often. Believe me, it was one of the most painful things I'd ever done. But I, I would read through these texts. And what was so fascinating to me was what the boys were saying didn't concern me at all. It was what the girls were saying. The language was horrific. And it was one in particular text where this was a friend of my son's. And she said, never forget this. You know how degrading it is to be 16 years old and feel like you have to give a guy a blank. And it hurt me so much, you know, thinking, where is, where is her mom or her parents? You know, why isn't anyone reading her texts? Um, and what have we done to our girls, our young girls, with this? And I don't, I don't blame the feminist movement, but something had gone awry. How did we move them from the rights of women to something that was not healthy for them? And I just felt like, I wanted to lend my voice to this conversation. And I wasn't even sure what that meant. And so I came at it from the way that I came at it. I, I focus on social impact. I focus on teaching women how to give, shop, and invest to change the world. And so I started taking a research approach to this. And I, I started with the social impact space to find out how you're effective there. And then I moved over to what's happening specifically around women's empowerment. And there is so much beautiful work being done. Um, when I found out that this funding levels are so low, it just moved me to say, we, I know that women can be inspired, women and men, to be inspired to do more, to, to lift up other you know, women and children around the world. And so that was, that's how I got here. Antoinette, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. That was beautiful. That's, it's very, very similar to, um, I was just speaking with a friend of mine in Africa because um, I told her, I said, you should join us because it was very similar to her presentation. And I totally forgot that we did a, a conference in Ghana called Mama Africa Mother Spirit. And just like how she was asking you on your journey, um, mine started, this is back in 2012 when we first started working with Ben Bowler. And it was, you know, for the U Day and everybody thought it was the end of the world. My husband was the one who said, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's the, it's the, the time of the feminine rising mm -hmm. he specifically told me, he said, this is the time that women were going to move into places, a position of power, spiritually, economically, politically, on a social level, all these different things. And at the time I didn't really think anything of it. You know, I didn't know what he was talking about, yeah. but he was, he was the one who kept kind of introducing me to the, to the mother spirit until this woman asked me to sit on this mother spirit panel with her. And at that time, I still didn't know what she was talking about, but we were on a trip in Asia, in Korea, Japan, and the Philippines. And all of a sudden I started seeing all these signs everywhere. Mm. And I didn't understand it at the time. I was like, I think she's trying to talk to me. I think she's trying to tell me something. And so I created a group called the Daughters of the Divine Mother, and these are just for women only for us to be able to explore ideas of how we want to reshape and put the information out to the world. And then the page, Daughters of the Divine Mother page, which is for men and women to actually appreciate the teachings and the philosophy of the, of the women. And then from there, that just kind of continued on and on with my journey. And I was like, I didn't understand what they were talking about at the time. And now I realize to tap into the mother spirit to listen to what she's saying, to see how we can sit there and help grow us, especially during this time, because it is the time of the rising. And all of this information that we've always had and stored within us is now kind of like an awakening for a lot of us, you know? And I'm hoping that like our younger sisters and other women will start to, to hear her voice as well 
and start to empower themselves in any work that they do, yes. you know, whether it's, you know, socially at home or something that's political or economical or, or whatever, but to hear that voice and with the support of men and women and everybody together, I think she will be lifted. Thank you for sharing that. I think that such you make such an important point about, you know, we don't always know why we're being led somewhere. It, it doesn't even make sense initially, but we have to be so in tune with the voices that we're hearing and just take the next step and see where it leads. Anyone else like to share? Your, um, your story, Liz, thank you for sharing that, reminded me a little bit of, of a situation that I had when my, I have three nieces, my sister um, died when my youngest niece of those three was 16. Mm -hmm. And the girls after their mother died, the three um, decided they were gonna rent a house on the beach for a week, about two months after my sister died. And I went to visit them there. And when I showed up, the music was blasting. And my youngest niece was the only one home. Her name is Chelsea. And she was singing to this song that she was playing that was blasting so loud. And it was a rap song. Not all rap is bad. I don't, I don't want to down rap. But this particular song was so desecrating to women. Every word, every phrase was just... Go, went deeper and deeper into the desecration of the feminine. And she didn't hear me knock because the music was playing so loud. And I just stood there and listened to her sing these words. And towards the end of the song, she looked and saw me and I gave her a hug and I just looked into her eyes and I said, do you believe the words that you're singing? And her whole face went blank. Mm. And she thought for a couple of seconds, for a couple of seconds and she said, I don't know, I never thought about it. And that's the automatic, the normal. I mean, it was normal for her to sing that song. Yeah. And she had never thought about the words that she was bringing physically into her own body. And so we talked about that, but wow, that's, it, that is normal. Yeah. And so the education is so critical. Yes. Yeah. We've got, I'm just to say hi to Alexandra's here. Tammy's popped in since we started. Welcome. Great to see you. Hi. hi. Um, I just wanted to, um, oh, sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I just wanted to chime in as well about, oh, I'm hearing like, I don't know, like an echoey sound. Let me see. You're good. It's really, there's something disrupting. I think it's because some of us aren't muted. So maybe sometimes that happens. Okay, now I don't hear it. All right. I just wanted to share too, one of the things that has been really impactful for me about this, this, these pillars. And as you kind of, at the end of the presentation are asking, well, you know, what is the possibilities here? Like how to harness this? I think one of the key things for me has been the embodiment of feeling the relationship with the pillars and my own healing journey, like the things that have been the most challenging for me as a woman in my life and how that relates to how I want to impact women and young women. And I also just want to say to specifically right now, the pillar that stands out and you put a lot of energy to it when you were talking about it was equality, which to me, in relation to the chakras is the the voice and I felt and I feel in my own life and where I have experienced abuse in my childhood there was an experience of of dimming my voice and I feel like that is where as Antoinette was just talking about you know her husband saying yeah the divine feminine is rising well, I think there's also something really important about, and I'm so grateful Alexandra's here too, is this relationship to what are we working on? What is like our greatest healing in our bodies right now? Like where are our wounds in the body? And for me, it's been 
for my my most of my life of coming into what I feel most called to do in my soul work has been I've had challenges with my throat and with the second um, chakra. I call it the second portal in the work that I do, but it has been around my own power. And, and so I just want it because I know Liz and I have been in conversations about the relationship of the pillars, not just of what's happening for women out in the world, but how we feel those pillars in our bodies and of our like greatest possible healing through the garden of joy and my personal soul work has been i the only reason i want to bring garden of joy to the world is to empower the next generation of women specifically the women that are mostly marginalized and i really want to make voice to that right now the black women and the black young women that are rising right now and the native the native communities in the world of the women like i i I know that most of those really dark parts specifically of the the one that you when you were talking about the fifth pillar was like that is directly going towards the most marginalized places and marginalized parts of the cultures of the world and so so something really like awoken in me as Liz has shared these pillars and how I relate that of where my still healing journey is unfolding, how I want to impact young women, the future generation of women, specifically in the parts where I have, have healing work to do still, humbly learning. And that, that that's been one of the things that really turns me on to these pillars is how can I amplify philanthropy also as a woman, as a woman, a white privileged woman in the, what, how can I extend my privilege in a way that's actually doing something useful for the, for the most out of balance part of what we're talking about here of the divine feminine. It's rising and there is so much work to do. So, um, so that's been really important to me about like, as you were listening, I'm really, I, I was feeling it in my body as you were talking about it. So I just wonder how that relates, especially as we have a, a younger woman here in the, I'd love to hear for her, you know, in her journey as an empowered young woman of this next generation, as well as our black sisters in the room too. Um, I want to empower, you know, that's what matters to me. And so anyways, I just wanted, I could go deeper there, but I'm gonna wait for now. Yes, thank you. We invite other voices, please. And Mira Michelle, we also just did a beautiful um, seven, your seven sacred feminine, right? I mean, there's the number seven is so. Seven, seven archetypes, seven chakras, yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Well, there's a lot here. There's a lot, right? Um, like Liz, I have spent quite some years working with the sacred feminine the last years rather intensely last 10 12 years rather intensely on all levels and um, i'm particularly interested in what liz is doing because she's coming from a different direction i go soul body i go psychology i go spiritual that's usually and and then um, empowerment also communication skills and other life skills and um and really creating female solidarity circles, taking female solidarity to the next level. And we've achieved it here. The women stay in their circles. They support each other. They're making ceremony. They're helping each other with their work economically. They're hiring each other. They're really doing these basic steps and it's working, it's successful over five years here in Europe. The thing with Europe, I wanna shout out to one of your pillars. The thing with Europe, I mean, um, I'm not saying I've done the research, but I do know that at least Germany and other European states have um, across the board support for women when they're pregnant and birthing. So every child in Germany receives, uh, no, it doesn't matter what social and economic condition you have, 170 euros or no, like 189 euros a month, period. Every child in Germany, whatever, gets that just to start. 
Any mother gets three years off of work with guaranteed back to job. Maybe not to your, if you're a year off, you get guaranteed back to your same job. If you're three years off, you get back to the company, but maybe not your same job. If you, if you, if you're a single mother, you get your rent paid plus econ for the first three years of your child's life plus 1500 a month. So there's also, there's a, there's a, a social system that makes sure people, especially mothers don't th fall through nets and to the ground, you know? So, um, what I want to say is one thing that came up, I just want to throw it out there is that our female veterans in the U S need much more care because it can add that to, to our list. Some of our female veterans are really in trouble and, and, and I really, really want to, especially a POC women of color, people of color, but especially women of color in the armed forces, um, as well as our, our um, native sisters out there in the reservations. Um, you know, I, it was interesting what you said, Summer, because I agree with you. I just want to just like pinpoint some things and then wrap it up and come more tight. I agree with you on one level. It's interesting because I merged both these stories of what you were, what you said about the girls and the cell phones and where, where they're at and, and your story also, because African-American culture, even though in many, many places, it's hardcore there is also this other thing going on. You know, there's this, there's this sort of connected spirit, connected to the music, connected to this authenticity, connected that, that make the, the young women much more confident and, and um, connected to their spirits and their intuition. And what they need, yeah, they definitely some social uplift in certain areas, but they, they need economic support, job skills, because they have a level of confidence, which sometimes white culture is not giving to their kids. And I know this very well because I'm half white. My mother's white. I grew up partially in a white family in England, you know, and then I grew up with my black family in America and I, and, and I hang out with my white girlfriends and it's like, there's no soul to soul. Oh, there's no grit in the relationship between the mothers and daughters sometimes, you know, on a kind of average basis, there's just a whole piece missing in there. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I'm, this is not a, this is, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just telling you what I see. Whereas in my African-American culture, you're getting close. You're dancing together. You're being silly. You, you know, you got this whole groove thing going on, which kind of takes you through some of those other things that may take you out. Right. And so with the, the, the young, and I work a lot with young um, uh, uh, European women also they have a lot come here that's what they're thirsting for is that authenticity not so many rules not so many rigid mindsets that they can't get open and experience themselves and that's why I like outreach and camps and having multi-racial meetings and 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 um sort of being in the nature together is, is awesome and i would definitely support that more much more so they can they can understand and, and assimilate in each other's cultures and, and get the you know the exchange going those, those sort of programs are very very successful and, and women young women can grow very quickly in those programs i've seen them happen they're very successful it doesn't take so much money for those and um the, the other thing i would say is that and this is the thing i'll end with right now for right now is that women between the ages of 30 and mid fifties. The, these are the really active years. These are when women can really rise. And I feel like when, when women have the support between this age to go deeper, to go more authentic, to get out of their pain bodies, out of their conditioning, they're going to do the most good for other women. So I would focus on some entrepreneurial support for women like you and I, like a lot of women here who are, or who are cool. just a group of women in growth and empowerment. You're freezing up, sweetie. Can um, you... Sorry. Okay, let's repeat that last one. Yep. yep. Of, um, circle work. Women, when they sit in circles and then they go out 
and they sit in small groups and they go in circles in an, an authentic place with whatever structure you have, those women will grow so fast. It's amazing the heart intelligence that women have with each other once a foundation of trust is put into place. And it, it just doesn't need to be any sort of religion. It doesn't even have to be spiritual, you know, per se. I mean, everything's going to be spiritual because we're spiritual creatures. But uh, I mean, to say the wordology doesn't be spiritual. All it needs to be is straight and heart. And hoo, 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 hoo. it's already happening grassroots across Europe, across thousands and thousands of circles of women happening. To harness that. I've already started in, in part. We can harness them and make more of a collective. Like, so let's just say on the West Coast, we, we find, uh, let's see, 150 decent circle, ongoing circle groups. Then we can bring those together and create sort of a collective, right? And then they can have one mission a year and they have the same blueprint for that mission, right? This is the power I think feel to harness because they're the ones on the ground. They can get to the young women. And you know, sometimes the young was the last thing I'll say. Sometimes the young women, they won't want to go to circle if their mom asks them, right? Like, no, I don't want to go to a ceremony, you know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> but as soon as they see me, because I'm outside their spectrum, right? They get curious. And I'm like, come on, let's go and do your first blood ceremony. You need your first blood ceremony. And they're coming. They're just, and the power that goes through those girls, I can cry thinking about it. When they meet each direction and each element and they just stand before that door, they are shifted. Then they welcome their blood. They welcome their power. You know, it is, it is awe-inspiring. And you can imagine within, within one or two years, we could have literally 40 or 50,000 circles for young girls going through first blood. This is a traditional ceremony that every single in indigenous tribe of every single nation and race has had because it's from the earth. Every, everyone has had a first blood ceremony. Not every one of us, but every one of our ancestors. So that's what I would do. And I would start writing up something like that because I've already started connecting groups of women, like the women that came on the, the Sacred Feminine panel. It's one of my passions too. And I would love to, to greet and to work with you all to start putting together plans like that. I would take the more grassroots and bring those sisters in. And you can give the structure. Awesome. Thank you, sweetie. We start talking about funding. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, I invited my friend to lie. Yes. <laughs> and I see my friend Alexandra. She's, she's um, the head of Africa World Week 2020. Yes. Yes. So I want to see some of my sisters here. So Delay, she's from, she's in Ghana. Um, she's American, but she's in Ghana. She was also uh, one of my presenters for the Mother Spirit Africa Week. And, um, and as we were talking about, it was one of the things that you had mentioned in your pillars. Yep. Because um, every time that I do something uh, as far as like a spiritual conference or something that goes on when we're traveling or touring, I always feel like part of the feminine divine part of that spiritual thing is that we have to do some loving service. Mm -hmm. Instead of we all congregate in another country and we all talk and we all preach to the choir and everything. And it's like, we need to like walk our talk. Yep. And we need to spend a day doing our loving service as mothers out there. Yes. And while we was in Ghana, I said, look, find me the orphanage, find me the kids, find me the young girls, find me, show me what's going on. And there was one girl who was also, and I'm so proud to watch how she's growing up now. Uh, she's a young woman, but she lives in a, in a part of Ghana that's 60,000 people that has no water, no running water, and no plumbing whatsoever. You know, that, that's a lot of people. If you know what that's like, it's just open sewage. And they all have to go and buy water. You know how you see them like in Queen of Cotway. You have to go and buy a couple gallons of water so that way you can bathe, you can wash your clothes, and you can shower. And this woman is the cleanest. Her hair is so tight and so clean, and she looks so fresh that you would not think that she lived in this place. But we never understood like how much she actually had to go through just so that way she could be clean to be able to go and get a job and to be able to do what she's doing. 
Yeah. And when we went to go to the store to buy rice, I made the guys come with me. I was like, we're going to go buy some tampons. We're buying tampons. Y'all going to go and get that 50 pack. You know, we're going to buy some rice. We're going to get these things and we're going to go in and help because, you know, not all girls have the access to education. You yep. know, not all girls, you know, they have to sell gum on the streets. They don't all are able to do what a lot of us other women are able to do. And by, by seeing and observing and being within their, their spots and their moments kind of gives us another eye. So, so I want you guys all to meet Delay. Yeah. If you have anything to say, please. Yes, please. Oh, sweetie, you're, um, you're muted. Delay, can you unmute yourself? Okay. Um, my name is Delay. I'm living in Ghana at the moment. And um, as Antoinette said, I, I'm very interested in the divine feminine rising because um, in Africa, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to be done as far as that is concerned because we have systems here which are historical, which are traditional, female genital mutilation, child marriages. Um, there's a school in the north that has been open for 25 years and not one girl has graduated. Not one. Not a single one. <laughs> you know, and, um, and then you get the child marriages and then you get um, the suppression of the feminine. And, and to take it a step further, the suppression of the feminine, it's not only in females, it's also in men. Because men too have a feminine side to them, but because we are in a patriarchal society, um, the man is always supposed to not do certain things. So the woman is always put into that role. Um, I have friends who, when I go to their, their house and she cooks a meal for us, she serves it to me and her husband and she won't eat with us because the culture and the, the programming has led uh, to this thing. We have a system in Ghana called the Trokosi system where a girl child is given to the shrine for a misdemeanor or a crime that the, the male in the family has done. So faced with even those three things and then today I find out that um, a rape victim has to pay 300 to 800 CDs for a rape kit. So looking at those kind of things, it's, um, it's a deep-seated cultural thing in both men and women. So, so women too are to blame a lot because they train boys. They teach boys. They teach girls because the women are the nurturers. You know, and, and in, in Ghana, women are very economically minded. They have they have the senses to make money to 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 um but they are always suppressed and so um i look at what i can um i can do and the only thing i can do is set an example and and show like our house help at the moment she went and had a baby and now the man has left her and she's by herself the baby went to hospital and who foot the bill the bill comes, um, but we don't have social systems or something that she can access to go and pay that hospital bill. So it's it takes all of us. It takes the men and the and the female, and women have a lot of masculinity in them. They have to suppress it a little bit and bring up the feminine. Mm -hmm. That's so. Like, what do you think is most needed? What do you think would make the most significant change? And, and you're absolutely right in what needs to happen, but what, what can we do? What steps would need to be taken that would actually improve conditions for women and children? Well, um, you know, there are programs here, uh, um, uh, reproductive health programs and stuff which help the women. But until you get to the men's psyche, and, and, and that I think is going to take the generations coming up that we are teaching. Because I think you can't teach the old dog new tricks kind of thing. And, and Ghanaian men are very rigid in their sense of, you know, 
they and and Christianity too is not helping because Christianity they are believing that oh the man is the head of the household so I can't make any decisions. You know, we went to look at a house for um, a friend of ours, and in the kitchen, there's no place for a stove. So I knew immediately that a man had designed this house and had not asked for any input from a woman, because a woman, he thinks he can go outside and, and, and cook, you know. So, so, so it's a big, deep um, embedded traditional cultural thing and if you ask me to say where do you start um you have to empower the children to 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 be able to say no i don't want to do that you know i i want to go to school because um in the northern regions of our country the the little girls the young girls have to go out to sell oranges or whatever to make income for the family and um, that's where they get raped or um, coerced into um, other things which takes away from their education. You know, and I think a lot of things have to be free for girls, you know, Tampax yeah. and all those yeah. things, you know, and no rape kit fee. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is we had talked about these circles for young women, but we equally need circles for young men. Right? As well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think it's very necessary to involve men because you need that balance. Excellent. If you don't have that balance, you can get the woman and then you'll get a woman who is independent and she'll be beaten down. Yeah. Yeah. Because the man thinks that, hey, you know, you're not staying in your place. So so that it's a big it's a big psychological trauma that um women face in this in this uh country. And and teenage pregnancy is is one thing that we can work on, you know, through plays and through music. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who is doing um, uh, helping the communities through music and plays, and she's teaching these young children. She's taking them, you know, she's showing them, she's encouraging them to speak their mind. So hopefully, yes. one step at a time, we we'll yes. do that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. It's so insightful. I've I, I would love to interject yeah. here. Yeah. I'm, this is Alexandra Loves. Hi, everybody. I was hi. watching, hi, I was watching this presentation um, online uh, and then realized that I had, Summer had invited me to it and then uh, realized that I had the time wrong. And so I was watching something that I, I should have been in the room earlier. <laughs> uh, but I, I did get to see um, I did to get to catch the pillars and I, this work is so amazing. I love it. And, and I, I love that it's in alignment with, um, with other work I've seen, whether it comes from, uh, ancient, you know, ancient spiritual, um, spiritual text or it comes from other spiritual, you know, more contemporary spiritual, um, ideas. Thank you. Delay, I believe. I'm not sure how to say it. Delay. Thank you for, for share, giving us that insight to the experiences you're having in West Africa. Um, I wanted to say something about my experiences in West Africa. I visited uh, Benin, Togo, and Ghana last year. Um, I was on a spiritual trip. And when I was on that trip, I had gone and brought, and this has to do with everything we've been talking about in the last 15 minutes, especially around community and how we can help. And... Um, one of the, so I was in West Africa and I was helping my teacher, my teacher and her sister support about 40 children, uh, depending, depending on, you know, the season of the year who are forgotten children who have been kicked out of their houses, who have been abused and thrown away, like just kids who are thrown away. And there seems to be no, this is in Benin specifically, and there seems to be no help for these kids. It is ex very expensive. Benin is, the area in Benin I was in was probably one of the, most poorest areas I've, I've been in in my life. And I was shocked to find out that people who could barely afford to eat one school book for one child is 150 American dollars. And so as I raised all this money to bring, so these kids, our goal was to, you know, make sure they could eat and eat for the whole year instead of it coming out of my, my teacher's uh, paycheck and her sister's paycheck so they could concentrate on other things. And we got there 
and we're like, okay, well, we can fundraise. What are the solutions here? Because we can fundraise every year, but um, really we need to like sort of that concept of teach a man to fish. Like we need to be, them to be able to be able to lift themselves up. And um, that's when I started learning about uh, colonialism. And well, I already started learning about colonialism, but I was starting to learn about specific colonialism that happened in that part of West Africa. And, and I'm gonna get to, to why this is important in just a minute. Part of the colonialism that happened, and you can correct me if I'm, if I'm missing something or if I'm wrong, please, is what was done was they took everybody in that area of West Africa, including the country of Togo, Ghana, at Nigeria, uh, Benin, and they took all the families and they said, sister over here, mother over here, dad over here, cousin over here, separated them, they put borders and changed people's names and they brought Christianity. And so one of the things that can be done is one, educate ourselves on how colonialism work because it's a spell. It's, it's, a, it's an evil spell. It's a nasty, brilliant monster. And so this is what we're fighting against. If we think of it in terms of an enemy, knowing your enemy and how it's designed is the best way to beat it, right? So that's one thing is to understand colonialism because guess what? That happened here too in the United States and is continuing to happen right now. If we can understand it on our own, in our own, uh, uh, where we live right now, which is not our own, but where we live right now, we can also understand how, how it happened over there. So that's the first thing. If we can also understand colonialism, we can understand sort of the remedy. And one of the things I realized while we were there and we brought this money and you know we're setting up how we can bring food to, to all these kids, we realized like, oh, okay, we can't, we can fundraise every year, but what's really important is that, that they are, they have their own economy and that they have their own community and that they have the tools they need, especially for the women to protect themselves and, and also bring back, how do we create a place where they can reconnect with who they are? And, and so we realized that what, and what we're trying to do now is build up a community that has schools, that has um, uh, empowerment skills, community skills, as well as schooling, as well as, you know, schooling skills for those kids. And in order to do that, we have to build up the community and the economy around them. We have to get everybody working together and we have to do it on their terms according to their culture. Now, my teacher is from there, so, you know, but my point is I can't just go in as an American, whether I'm a child of Africa, to Africa, being part of the diaspora, I can't go in with my my ideas of how it's going to be because I'm not of that land. I'm not, I'm, I don't live there. I don't live that life. And so another thing that can be done besides educating ourselves in colonialism, understanding this nasty beast and, and discovering what the remedy for this is, is when we are, when we are confronted with a community or when we can, when we can connect with a community that needs help, just like delay. I'm sorry if I'm murdering your name. I'm sorry. Delay. I'm just looking at it on the screen. I'm not sure how well, to say it. It's, it's Delay. Delay. As Delay was saying, is how do we get into these communities, find out what they need, and understand that if we want to build them up, that we're talking about building a community and economy around whatever, like the one issue we see, so that it's maintainable by the community themselves. And the, the reason we have to approach with them being in the lead of that is because one of the things that was taken away in colonialism um, was our, 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 the spiritual connection, the connection to nature, and that has to, that has to, um, that has to come back. This is what I loved about what um, someone was talking about. Uh, I think Mich Mary Michelle was talking about like the blood ceremonies and calling of the four the four corners and, and the and the nature that it, it if if we all had those practices of connecting with nature whatever your religion is if you have a religion if you still had that spiritual connection uh to nature and you had the wisdom coming down from your ancestors and you were integrated with your spirit and how that and how that is related to nature then our world would look very different and i think this is something that everybody is searching for why is everybody on 23andMe and getting their blood tests and genetics? Why is everybody going back to Africa? And, and people want to know who they are. And 
and uh, getting in touch with spirit, it's because it's time. The veil's being being pulled back right now. People people want this. They want to go back to these indigenous ways. We're trying to reclaim who we are and be integrated with our spirits. And that's it's true for people in in, in the continents as well. Yeah, and so, and the mother spirit is actually um, um, very highly regarded, but somehow in humanity they've suppressed it. Yes. Yes, it is absolutely absurd. This world, so I'm, this might be a little far out there, but I'm just going to go there. This world is, this earth is a feminine planet. That doesn't mean that women own it, but it means that this is a feminine planet. Anything that is destructing, desecrating feminine energy is an abomination. Anything that is desecrating, destroying feminine energy is an abomination. No wonder we have fires everywhere. No wonder we have the world trying to shake us off the land. No wonder we have volcanoes creating new layers where we used to live. So, so we're seeing the evidence. Sorry, I'm plugging in my phone. We're seeing the evidence of uh sorry i hope you can still see me it shut it off for me can you guys still see me or hear me i'll finish up in just a minute you can okay cool so we have all this evidence somebody was talking about about how we're talking about how like uh, um we need more support for women in this world we um we we need not only women but men to get back in touch with their feminine this is the this is the major call that is happening right right now remember that this is a feminine planet and look at all of these examples where we are uh destroying and desecrating um our uh, the feminine and manifest which is which is women and also aspects in men um the the call of the world right now is to um is to lift this up is to destroy patriarchy is <laughs> is to um uh, bring up build communities in in uh based in a feminine way which is in alignment with this this feminine earth we all feel it not all of us are able to name it or know how to engage with it or want to look but this is what the call is right now and i just love i'll just finish i just love that i'm i'm seeing this in like the work i'm doing africa week 2020 the work in in um i'm seeing this in world unity week definitely on this panel um and I think really the solutions have to do with understanding the enemy, understanding what what kills the feminine divine, and what destroys it, and understanding uh, understanding it in relation to the world we're living in right now, and and also building uh, community and building economy and building support and building empowerment around community. Okay, I'll stop. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, who would yes would love to hear from others. I just want to. I just want to say, Alexandra, it is like so good to hear you. Yes, she's in World Unity Week. Her voice yeah. is being heard. Awesome. Goodness for that. Yeah. Go Thanks, ahead. love. Thanks for inviting me, Eric. Hi. Yes. And by the way, Antoinette has an amazing video about the mother spirit. And it's a song that I'm actually going to share in the dance that's going to happen sometime after this conversation as well. But uh -huh. she's, she's called to sharing it. So whenever it feels right, Liz, I just want to, it's a beautiful video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, oh, I actually I mean... have it ready to go to share because I have it prepared on my, so if, Either or, Antoinette, if you want to share it from your computer, you can do that as well. I just wanted to honor Liz. I would love plan. to. I would love to do, um, just finish our conversation and, and end with that. That would be amazing if that works for you. Thank you. Erica, do you want to say something? Yes. Fantastic. And I keep staring at your beautiful daughter as well, who spoke with us the other day. And I, I'm just, I'm so... Uh, amazed that you are here in this conversation it just shows i mean it gives us all faith in the next generation so thank you for being here and please speak your voice as well if you will but yes go ahead thank you 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We just want to say um, it's really beautiful to hear the heart and strength behind all of the women who have been speaking here today. Um, indeed, we are all voices and an expression of the mother herself, the one true mother who is the mother of us all, really. And I want to thank you for sharing your beautiful presentation, Liz. It was absolutely gorgeous, really well thought out, really profound. And it reminds us of we have um, a very unique situation that we're a part of and, and we're very humbled by it where all of the topics in your seven pillars powerpoint presentation um health education economics everything that you mentioned protection safety all of these topics were presented by our brothers and sisters in the heart of the world who are original peoples of the earth. Um, they really like to just be called the peoples of the earth, even though they are indigenous, because they say in the origins, we're all peoples of the earth. And indeed, we all have that relationship to our mother. And they did a, an investigation for a very long time, many, many, many years through consultations with this with the mother herself and asked her about all of these topics that we're discussing today and she gave this path that she wanted to guide that was to bring back the healing of the feminine in nature and the mother of course is seen as a woman she is a feminine spirit nature is also seen as a woman and all of us women are true representations of the earth we carry all of her sacred sites within us and so all these topics were brought to her and it was also voiced from her how and in what order she needed to heal and one of the things that began this process um it began with women and yes men indeed need to step into this process they are stepping into this process that she's guiding but one of the things she said in their consultations was because everything was birthed from women and women being the role models they were supposed to have been we birthed all of these children over all of these generations. And therefore we had a responsibility as women to heal. And through our healing, we would heal her because we are intricately connected with her. And so she brought out these feminine principles that were given to all peoples of the earth at the very origins. And it was an agreement that we made with her to remember those principles. And those principles are very simple and very complex because they show us a remembrance of living principles internally that we forgot as women, that were directly connected to all of the parts of her being in our bodies with everything we do. And because she is the mother of us all and truly is the one that provides everything for us, all of these things that we are seeking, economics, protection, safety, health education, comes from our remembrance of our relationship to her. So yes, these circles need to gather again and it needs to take place in nature where we can nourish nature by nurturing each other. And she, however, in this pathway has brought out a strong level of accountability. And has 
said that the protection and the safety will come once again when we remember how to live those principles internally as women that we forgot. And we want to offer that to all of us because we can get all these things externally, but what she says is none of that's going to do anything until, again, we become the example and begin teaching these younger generations through our own healing process. And um, so I just wanted to mention the beauty that's extremely powerful here and the voices of all of us who are representations of her. Um, and I think it's just, she also says that when we do that, we will hold the light of consciousness to bring awareness to the masculine where they again will remember that it is the staff of power that women give in strength to them where they reach their greatest potential and remember their original roles too. So in this path of healing, she gave the healing of the feminine in nature first and then bring the men into that because all beings were born of woman. And, and even men began that in the very beginning to learn of the feminine principles. And then the masculine principles will come to life. So this is the order she gave and she certainly did place the responsibility back on women to help them remember through a process of deep healing that really, and this may be hard to hear, You, you just muted. Uh, I'm so sorry. I accidentally muted you. I thought okay. that was another one. I, I did not mean to do that. My apologies. Okay. I just thought I heard background sound and I accidentally muted you. So wait, un unmute, Erica. I'm trying. Or you Actually, okay. you may need to unmute yourself, Erica. Erica, yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's totally okay. Um, it was very challenging for us to hear this in the beginning, but I, I do want to mention it because the hardest part of the work that she's given thus far and it's step by step they consult with her step by step is of course this is beyond race there's all this healing we know right through colonialism there's so much healing in every single race that needs to happen but all that aside what she's giving is a path to all of her children of the earth and it's beyond race, it's beyond religion, it's beyond, and yet all that is part of the healing process. Um, we are cells on her body, and when we heal, we will be able to bring more new healthy cells. But the hardest thing that she gives in that process and has thus far has been what, when we see things that are really painful to us, when we see other beings that are suffering, when we see things that we do not, we can barely stand watching that are going on in all parts of her body, to the children, to the women, to the little boys, to the men, to the waters, to the mountains, to everything. She says, what's going on beneath, on the surface, and above the earth, when you look out there and you see all that you are unhappy with, look again and look within what are we doing to ourselves what are we doing to ourselves that have affected nature and what have we done to nature that has affected ourselves it's a symbiotic mutualistic relationship we once had with her and and there's a healing process and indeed a lot of it is coming together as women and healing and remembering this process and being with the earth in every sense of the word because we have her in every part of our constitution and in that constitution are all the are, are many universes as well as we all know and we have forgotten we have forgotten so i just wanted to share that and um really feel honored to be here with each and every one of you today just really honored thank you so much for all that you're doing all that you're doing. Thank you so much. And I'm wondering, are those principles that can be shared, Erica? 
Can you repeat that question? Are those principles that can be shared with us, the principles that the mother has given that need to happen step by step in order to have this healing affected? Yes, it's a it's been a call that went out a few it was a lament, if you want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. She's been lamenting for years. Mm -hmm. Cry, but louder than it's ever been. And she asked for a process of four years. And some of the women here today have been part of that. Yes. Melly is one of those women as well. And there was a call that went out around the world. You know, we're very, we are the, we don't know anything about technology. <laughs> but spiritual work was done by those original peoples that have this relationship with her to call certain daughters and men out in the world that somehow answered this call. Yeah. And, and always with the understanding that it would expand, but she is the one calling those daughters. It's not us. We're yeah. simply a bridge for that. She's the one calling her daughters and her sons back to her again. And that call, um, there is an invitation that she has, and it's a four-year commitment, and it's very intense work. Okay. But she does give those principles, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's related to our sexuality that we lost, <clears throat> and how in our sexuality, every part of our sexuality was and still is connected to her, and this is why she is in the state that she is in. And yes, there's all this stuff in between too. That's all part of it too. But it's a major healing that has to take place and it is taking place. And then of course, one woman represents thousands. One man represents thousands. And it's starting very little by little. And only she says when it expands and when it begins and when there's true volition to heal. It's, so there is an invitation and we have no idea they're in constant dialogue with her every single day. And part of our role coming into this was we just finished this communication from her. And here we are at Unity Week. You know, we, have, we don't even know anything about, we don't even know how to do a Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> you figured it out, though. I did my best to help. <laughs> I don't know if I was much help, but it worked out. <laughs> Miracles do happen. Um, we are about five minutes left in what was the scheduled program. Summer, are you, uh, are you going live after this with your dance? Well, I, I just want to say there are some women in here that have not spoken, and yeah. I think it's really important we make space um, for the others that are, have been here this whole time and haven't been heard. Um, so and I, yeah. And I, I'm totally flexible. I can okay. do my dance whenever that okay. future time is. The other thing I just want to um, also acknowledge um, is Katrin was going to offer a meditation and I'm trying to connect to her yeah. and sh I think she's sleeping because it's in Germany. I think yeah. it's like, maybe I'm wrong, but isn't it like the middle of the morning? So we, I don't know what her plan was with you about that, it's but only, I'm, yeah, let's not worry. Yeah. We're good with that. Okay. Let's not worry about that one. So I would say anyone that wants to stay on and we would love to open it up again to anyone that would like to say something before we sign off. But if you need to go, we understand as well. And we just thank you so much for being here. And um, would anyone else like to share before we close our circle? Yes, I'm, yes, sweetie, just go ahead and um, unmute. Okay. Hello, how are you, everyone? Uh, I am so honored to be here, really. It's, it's just so lovely, and I am so happy, and I just want to share that it is amazing um, to watch and to hear what it's happening all around the world, the awareness, the consciousness about the divine feminine. And I can see that it's something that is going um, like bigger and bigger. And like every time it's, um, it's reaching out more, more and more people and it's amazing. And me as a young woman, um, I am. I feel so. How do you mm -hmm. To be a part of this, of the circle of 
part of a woman um, with awareness of her divine um, feminine and soul and body and and it is hard like nowadays like in this time it's hard to to find that and it's hard for young people women or men it's hard uh, for us to to be conscious about what our relationship with ourselves with other people with the mother uh, um like affects uh the world and um i know uh, um i i have faith that every day every day we're more and and i've seen and I've witnessed how we, uh, the, the secret, secret. Uh, secret. No, the, the, what do you say? Desecration. I saw, with, how do you say? The desecration of everything. Yeah, we desecrate um, with songs, with words, with thoughts, with actions our bodies, ourselves, our, our mother, our environment. And we don't realize that, like we, we don't see that. And we think it's normal and we think it's just like how it is. And it's just a song and it's just a word. And it's just like, but we don't see that when we sing, when we dance, when we speak, we birth this energy that actually is da damaging 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 um the mother and the world and and our spirit and what we need and what we are doing here what i see we're doing here all together and what i think it's so beautiful is we are um doing the circles with young people, with women, with uh, men that bring this knowledge to all, to all of us. And, and it's just like saying, oh, we gather and we say, okay, this is what happens when uh, we use these words, our thoughts, our songs. So it's just, like bringing awareness and consciousness to, well, to all of the children of the earth. But I think it's really important to do this with young people, young generations. And as we said, like uh, many of, some of here have seen the, the film that um, the circle of all life, um, like birth, I don't know, like bring, que que, el, que trajo la, que la, la película que trajo el círculo es que, oh, que the, the film that the circle for all life brought eso <laughs> <laughs> but our actions are sacred our words are sacred our thoughts are sacred and it's important for all of us to know that and to really see that it's not just a song and it is it it's not just um, a word and it's not just like a nation, like that's normal. It's something bigger. And when we realize that, when we open our eyes and our hearts to see this truth, then we can actually change the world. And it's amazing that we're doing that and we all are, are part of this. So thank you, thank you very much. And I'm just so grateful and so honored to um see how it, it's just so big here so thank you uh, i'm just i'm just wondering if you have like a prayer something that you want to share in your origin language i i just like if you feel you want to express um something to the world from your your language that you're translating 
Well, my language is actually Spanish and I'm just learning English. <laughs> so it's really hard. Um, it's really hard for me to, uh, to express myself the way I want to do it. Like in Spanish, like, yeah, I, sometimes I don't find the words. Uh, um, yeah, like this, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, you've done an amazing, it's been amazing, amazing. I think you've brought faith back to all of us. So thank you. And um, thank you so much. Ay, gracias. Gracias. Claro que sí. So, Liz, you just muted yourself. Got it. Mary Lou, Crystal Fire, Kelly. Um, if, would you like to say anything before we start to close it down? Yes. Hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm on my phone, so I can't see everyone's uh, face here. But um, oh my, I'm oh, so grateful for these expressions. And in my um, I'm just, I have a, a photo of my grandmother that I'm looking at right now, and I think of how each generation, how we want to get, we want to improve, we want to, um, you know, I think about my mother, you know, my mother, I came from a very traditional family, she didn't work, you know, but she was very talented um, musically, and she never really explored it, and so that was almost like a, it was something that I felt that I wanted to do to raise her spirit, you know, and so to, to create something that I feel that she, you know, to bring her voice into mine. And, and I think about my grandma, I'm looking at my grandma and, and, you know, she never drove a car, you know, and how each generation I see is just, um, is improving and I see that positivity happening that we are we're speaking we're talking we're using our voices now and I you know the one thing that really comes up for me is just the loss of the rites of passage we've really lost the how bringing nature um, I didn't have children but I have a stepchild that I raised for quite a while and um, you know she was in her phone all the time or in her iPad and to the best of our ability we'd, we'd get her outside let's take a walk let's you know let's be outside and I think that that really is I don't know 10 15 years ago or whenever when everyone just sort of slid into this little piece of plastic and stopped stopped looking around, stopped, you know, um, realizing that our true um, energy and the, and uh, our, our, our um, expression is, is in the natural world. We've lost that. Um, we've lost that. And I, but it's coming back. I really feel that, I feel that there, it is getting better. And, um, and, and, you know, it's so funny because when I say that, my challenge lately has been to try to figure out Zooms and, and I just got a computer yesterday. I've never had a computer and I thought, I, I have to get a computer to be a part of the circle for all life because I've got to, because this is where we are right now. We're not able to be together you know, and we have to get used to this. So it's, it's so, it's such a funny place to be because here I'm saying, get rid of that piece of plastic. And here now I'm embracing this going, how do you do this? You know? <laughs> so it's just, um, but you know, I just, I guess what I have to say mostly is just that I can see that we are evolving. And my, the first spokesperson I had in my life was Gloria Steinem. And, um, Tonight, actually, um, they have created a Broadway show about her life, and it's being talked about tonight on television. So, you know, she was really, um, and she's from my hometown, which I, Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> and so um, she was really my first person that, that was about um, uh, opening up the, the, the female, the woman's spirit. And, and and speaking, and she's such a humble person. And that was the one thing that always um, 
amazed me about her because she was such a force in front of people. But she said, it's not me. You know, I am leading them. They are the, they are the people. They are the, the, the positive energy that's going out. And, uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's just me. Um, so I, oh, I'm just filled with such joy right now to know that, that, um, Liz, the, the seven pillars is so amazing. And my experience in the last four years of the circle has been just, I, I'm, it, it's really tricky because I, I'm, I know that my voice needs to go out, but finding words is really, is really difficult because it's, it's such an encompassing, it's a huge energy. And Melly, as you were talking, I can remember when I first met you and you talked about putting a clown's nose, a clown's nose on your nose and you would go out into the street and create joy. It's like you would make people laugh. And I thought, and to bring that positivity. And every time I see you, I can see that little clown's nose. And, um, but you know, it's, it's recognizing that positive energy and, and holding that. And that is a really very challenging thing for us right now. But, um, but this is the time. Uh, everything is moving. Everything is, is, is changing. And we have an opportunity. And having this World Unity Week right now is such perfect timing. And the mother's voice coming out through the earth, mother's cry, is such perfect timing. It, it's like we have the ability now to shift and to change. We're giving ourselves that permission. So, um, gosh, I'm just... I'm just joyful. So just thank you, Liz, and for this opportunity and, and it brings me such joy to be a, a part of the circle. And so thank I love you. you. <laughs> thank you. I love what you said. It makes me think we don't have to figure it out. We just have to listen. You're saying this is perfect timing. You know, we don't have to have all the details. How about Crystal File Fire or Kelly before we um, close with Antoinette's beautiful music anything else you'd like to add yeah just i i actually was on for the first hour of this call because i i was with the children i we have two daughters and we make our home um available to everyone we have two other kids and a lot i usually have a lot of kids in our home because of caring what they're exposed to and how much technology they're around and um they're young too much music exposure as far as um being inappropriate but um just being that sanctuary where we're really a great place to be able to come and play in nature and being able to um be that be that mother energy for many so um i didn't necessarily hear all the topics from before but hearing Melly and um laughing waters speak about the next generation i hear the mother's voice when she shares protect and cherish innocence so that's <clears throat> of course as we um speak of anything else it's in ourselves so one thing that I really invite, if there's something that we're looking and begging for change in the world, is to even like write it down and then sit in meditation with nature and see how we within ourselves can make that shift, protect and share innocence. And um, yeah, just one other piece that um, I would like to compliment um, Erica's share about accountability is it's just something I've learned again and again. I, I have had the honor and responsibility of being a part of the Circle for All of Life, and we've been um, moving into our fourth year in the healing process for healing the feminine in nature. And um, I see reflections in my outer world and my family and my relationships and um, the greater, I mean, throughout humanity, like the vastness of the entire planet um, with the work very completely relative to the inner work we're doing. So 
Um, so much gratitude. Thank you for welcoming us into the World Unity Week and allowing the Earth Mother's Cry to um, be shared so broadly. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, the inner work is where it all begins. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you for the work you're doing to mother children. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to say how um, how moved I am to, to be let inside of your lives, those of you who shared um, the difficulties and the um, the just not knowing how to really affect the change that needs to happen and um, so I, I want you to know I feel that very deeply I have been always been a very global person I can't just you know do a city thing I can't just like get a job and be success I can't I cannot and um, so this is like this is like my shining day where the whole globe comes together and we actually can talk to each other. And now it's not, it's not only that, but it's the divine sacred feminine that is being brought forth. And so in my understanding of humanity, it is the thing that has been missed. In femininity, the mother, has been forgotten it's been forgotten that she is a being that she is alive that she feels everything that we're going through and she feels everything that all of our ancestors have gone through including the trees and the animals and the waters and the um the, the whole she feels she is providing that and that is so incredibly beautiful. I mean, we're missing the beauty and the love that is being given to us time. And so to not move into the negative aspects of our past and our cultures and um, our emotions and, um, you know, to really focus on healing our own uh, to strengthening our own internal balance, which for me is holding her foremost in my thoughts um, every day, um, is having conversations, nourishing her, um, is the key to us being able to have the strength to accomplish um, all these incredible um facets that humanity has generated that are you know despicable and difficult to uh to look at these things have to be nourished with the mother we have to work with the mother with the sacred feminine and we don't we haven't, we don't have a roadmap for that. However, um, we're all speaking up, we're all learning, we're all sharing. So I, I really am wanting, um, you know, the teachings that we have been working with are, are very outside of the box. And um, uh, they're not, um, they're not, the instant resolution to the social structure that we're standing in, all of us in the world. They are the sacred origin of what will create a different world for me, anyway. And without that sacred origin of how to create a different world, uh, it's, I don't know, I, you know, ugh. ugh. So <clears throat> I look forward to seeing, um, well, first, you know, if anyone hasn't seen Earth Mothers Cry, it's on our website, um, um, MotherEarthRestorationTrust.world. Um, and the sisters from the Circle of Life, we all 
are in different parts of the country and the world. And we, we uh, would love to mentor. We would like, love to have conversations. Um, we would love to assist uh, with us all coming together as a whole. Um, and since I'll speak for myself, not very technologically, I don't know if I can get back in there and review different things. If you reach out to us, you know, we will be sure to respond and um, generate anything that we can to assist in the mother being heard and healed and sacred feminine being aligned and strengthened worldwide. Wow, thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much, Crystal Fire. Is there anything else anyone just has to say? They just can't leave the circle yet. Nelson has to say something. I just want to say uh, once again, thank you to, to all of you, to the women who are stepping up and helping us men remember where we come from. Remember that we are birthed indeed from women, and it is therefore our responsibility to honor that in our lives with all our actions, our words, our thoughts. And that's uh, what I want to devote myself to, and in any way I can serve to make sure the feminine in women and in men too heals. That's, uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we are doing. And um, I'm humbled and honored and feel privileged here to be present in, 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 in the strength and in the power the feminine holds for the entire world. And I too am inspired and filled with faith and know that women shining light into our consciousness, into collective consciousness, humanity does have a, a, a path, a path of remembrance to, to come back to that sense of responsibility that pertains to every single human being on this planet, with the children, with the water, with everything that sustains us alive. It is our responsibility to nourish it, primarily the feminine, of course, because that is what allows us to root ourselves so that we can grow into the world and bear fruit. So thank you all for being present. And uh, this marks a new moment in my life, a new beginning on, on a path. And I'm really grateful for that. Really grateful. So thank you. Thank you so much, Nelson, for sharing the space with us all week. Really, I think in ways it takes courage, <laughs> but um, I just, you have been such a wonderful presence. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have put into the chat, if you'd like to continue the conversation, I don't know where we're going from here and that's okay. I just know we're headed in the right direction. And so I've just said, if you'd like to continue the conversation, email me and I've given you my email and, um, and we will, figure out what the next step is. And if you have an idea, something comes to you, inspiration, something to offer, please let me know that as well. And I will, I will coordinate it. I will figure it out. Um, Liz, yes. thank you so much for bringing this conversation to all of us. You are welcome. You are thank welcome. You. you know, I have to tell you this leaping in. I, two weeks ago, I didn't know I was doing this. Two weeks ago, I didn't know there would be a divine feminine convergence room. But when I looked at the list of rooms, it appeared to me that the female voice was missing. And so I said, we need a divine feminine convergence room. And then it became the divine feminine sacred masculine convergence room. And I was like, oh, maybe I should hurry and get my research done and create a presentation and so that was happening between running the wow. uh, room this week so it's been quite but you know what i just like yeah now's the time there's no more we don't have to be ready we start before we're ready and so um that just felt right so i would that? love i would love to just take oh. a moment to just if we could all just send some mm -hmm. love and gratitude to liz mm -hmm. for bringing this space forward and i know mira has brought a lot from Europe and I don't know if you both have slept much this week and believe me I don't see a lot of sleep happening in my house either but I just feel like can we all just send some love to Liz 
and and Mira, please, because and, this has been a all right, step. All right, Liz was, and Mira, this is was, a yeah. wave of gratitude coming to both okay. of you. Thank all you right. so much for holding this container all week. What an important room in world unity. Thank you. Yes. It has been a blessing. It has not in any way been a tour. Thank you so much. It's me and Liz, it's like we've known each other already a yep. hundred years. Yep. We laugh and we joke when the when the cameras, everything's done when we when, when we can, when you're all off of this, we're gonna go, <laughs> yeah, we'll be nutty. <laughs> I just want to say one sentence. There's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I think we're right before that wave. I have goosebumps. We're right before that wave. This is here now. And we're riding that wave. So I am so grateful to be here. So grateful to be here with all of you, with meeting you sisters. I know we'll continue and the mother will guide us to where we're going next. Oh, so, so I think Antoinette has, I was going to say, May, we're going May. next is Antoinette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is going to take us so beautifully. If those of you are interested in, in really embodying all that we've had a conversation about here into the body, Aunt Antoinette is going to start that off in this beautiful video. Would you like me to share it, yeah. Antoinette? Or share it from my screen because it's insane. all right. Whatchamacallit. But I, I want to say why why it's echoing off of what uh, everybody is saying is because one, um, like with Alexandra was saying because of her, uh, the, the thing with Christianity, but a lot of people have no understanding about the divine feminine within Christianity. So that's one of the reasons why I made the video was to also show how she's a part of every religion on the planet, spiritually, and religiously and everything. So the, the education is very important for us to teach our young ones. And then the other reason too, is I'm a musician is because people listen to pop music. They listen to things that's like, that kind of um, re uh, kind of connects with them. You know, there's a way, and so music is one way, technology and through imagery, through art, different types of things. You know, I want to try to reach people of all different kinds of ways. Another connection too that I realized that how I could do something was when I was in Ghana, Ali's sister, I had her makeup skirts and then I brought them here to America to sell or I would send for fabric from Ghana and I'd have American women sew the skirts, you know, to empower the women to create our own businesses. And when we tour and travel throughout the Native American lands, I support and buy the things that they make, whether it's jewelry or other stuff. And I take them on the road and I said, these are made by, by the indigenous peoples, you know, and, and this is how we're supporting each other. So that's called the Roost Daughter Collection anyway. But anyway, here's the song. I hope you enjoyed this and for understanding that the mother spirit is for men and for women. You know, this is the mother of us all and stuff. All right, here we go. Oh, you have to disable screen sharing. Did you get it, Liz? Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't. I didn't know what that was. I got it. All right. So everybody mute because it's gonna. Wait a minute. Stop share. How? I want to optimize. There we go. Yeah, those little buttons. Yes, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Yes. I right, enjoy. Mother Spirit. I am the feminine divine, the universe spirit, Shekinah, Shakti, the creative mother spirit, the divine minister, and the Holy Spirit. I am the giver of the breath of life. I am omnipresent in this universe and you actually live in me. I am 
I'm a creative daughter of the infinite mother spirit. I am equal co-creator with your local universe creator son. And we have created you in our image. I am the mystery of life, the vital energy spark, the essential factor of life plasm. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hang on one second. But that was so good. Sorry, it was, I just realized the imagery was off and everything. Hang on. Okay, okay. Do it again. Share screen, optimize. Okay, it's this one. Sorry. <laughs> universe mother spirit I am the feminine divine the universe spirit the Shekinah Shakti the creative mother spirit the divine minister that's so weird I did hit the wrong one <laughs> sorry about that here we go it's look good for me. What what happened? The words have to go with the image, you know. <laughs> like, oh. I was like, yeah, sorry about that. The words have to go with the image, but also doesn't make sense. I'm getting ready for the dance. I'm I'm listening. I'm awesome though it's um for us mere mortals it's it sounds pretty good thank you <laughs> oh, what's going on you haven't shared your screen yet oh i didn't oh sorry it's okay oh yeah here we go where is it? I am your local universe mother spirit. I am divine, the universe spirit, Shekinah, Shakti, the creative mother spirit, the divine minister. Oh, and the Holy Spirit. I am the giver of the breath of life. I am omnipresent. In Oops. I had the video on. <laughs> this universe, and you actually live in me. I am a creative daughter the infinite mother spirit i am equal co-creator with your local universe creator son and we have created you in our image Required revolutions of matter. 
in accordance with the physical, chemical, and electrical specifications of your world. I am the cause of purposeful organic evolution and reproduction. I am the source of all life on your planet, vegetable, animal, and human. I am the inherent endowment of mammalian mother love, maternal instincts, and the bestower of mind, animal, and human. personally maternal to all my children. I love you individually. I know you personally and I understand you completely. I am the provider of the spirit of intuition, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of courage, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of worship, and the spirit of wisdom. I am the Holy Spirit, and I extend to you my fostering care and spiritual ministry as I work in harmony with the spirit of truth and your indwelling spirit lead you ultimately to the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. So good. Yes. So good. So, good. so beautiful. Thank Sorry. you. It's so perfect. Thank to, you. To round this out. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's amazing. And all that, and all the text came from a, a book we that he called the Urantia book. Oh. And so I really love that. That you know we're, we're covering all the women, we're covering all the mothers and all the the spirits, everything combined together. So yes. Everybody, you know, it's all inclusive for everybody and stuff. You know, so yes. message. Yes, the, what this circle has been such a clear indication of this. I just, it has been so powerful to me that we are women, we are sisters. It doesn't matter where we are, what color we are, what our backgrounds are. We are just, we are all connected and, and men. Nelson, I'm not leaving you out. I, I swear, I'm just, I, this just it has been so powerful to see this. And, you know, it's the separation that will cause problems. We must unite and we, we will, we are. So, um, I am just so full. I hope you are. It's been incredible. And uh, knowing that this is just the beginning, I don't know where we go, but we'll figure it out. And please uh, connect with me and I will keep us connected, I promise. And uh, we will do beautiful things together. So. Liz, we're we're going to have the, the elders consult with the mother to see if, because we're in a moment, of course, yep. and they're, they're constantly have their finger on her pulse yeah. with what's going on worldwide. Yes. Um, and doing work like many of us are to shift. Yes. Right now we can't meet. We're doing it in ways like this. Yes. But it's all coming. And we're going to consult and have them consult her and okay. see what she comes up with in that consultation. How this, there's something's, because they're present here with us and she is too, to see what, what's being birthed from this, this, sisterhood masculine brotherhood all it's all reuniting for her in her name and uh we'll get back to you and and we'll and share we'll, we'll, sh we'll share all yes. of the conversations and and you can see in your heart if it feels right to you and i would ask everyone to do that everyone connect with Mo the divine mother connect with source do, let's just let's spend some time doing that now and what we come up with so there's no doubt she's speaking to us and we are listening. So. Yes, we are. Thank you for uh, that beautiful song. Thank you. All the children of the earth 
you need to be listening to things like this. Oh, yeah. Remember to remember to remember. And my daughter's going to include it in her list that she's going to share with friends. Good. <laughs> yes, yes. Good. And just like the other woman was saying, you know, some of the lyrics that we're hearing, I was like, I'm going to have to make a responsibility that the lyrics, just like my husband, all the lyrics always stay positive. Yes. You know, no negativity, no twerking, no foul language, and no debasement of women. Yes. You know, so it starts there for us to try to encourage our young people. Yes. Yeah. Because we're all searching for the nourishment of Mother, the Divine Mother. I mean, we need that. We are yearning for it. I yes. mean, we are, yes, we yes. need it. Yeah. Many things we're all going to strengthen. <laughs> yes. If your daughter, Erica, wants to participate in any of my musical projects, please send her to me. Oh, she would love that. God. I love that. <laughs> you just had to go outside to use the bathroom. Oh. Yeah. But she heard the whole thing. She heard it all. Yeah. She was just saying the other day how challenging it's been in tears. Mm -hmm. to yes. Speak to her younger generation on, on social media and say, "Yep, Do you realize what it is that you're listening to. You're you're inciting yourselves and provoking these yeah you know, this energy that's creating so much harm." And we said, "Well, what's the solution to that?" Some of the beautiful women said, "They said make a playlist of all the songs that oh. nourish, mother, nourish ourselves and share it with them." Mm -hmm. and, uh, I will lift her up. I will lift her up. Yeah, support her. Just send her to me. <laughs> I got techno, I got pop, I got rap, I got everything. All right. All I right. love it. I love it. That's going to be an incredible creation. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to keep on.